Hey, this is Seth with SethPerler.com. Uh, did you hear about the buffalo who sent his boy to college? Yeah, when his son left, he said, Bye, son. Eh, that's pretty good, huh? All right, cheesy. I know. All right, hey, how's it going? So, I'm here today to talk to you about planners for people who hate planners. If you hate planners, you're in the right place. There's all these videos all over YouTube about planners, and there's all these websites that talk about planners and how to use planners and stuff, and they're all for highly organized people. You watch some of these videos, and you're gonna see like a highly organized person who's like giving their take on it. And the thing is, is that these less left brain, like linear, sequential, structured, naturally organized people love these things, okay? They like to feel organized. It gives them a good sense of control. They, they feel good when they have these systems. And they're able to take these systems and run with them. They're able to do tremendous amounts of details with these systems and all this stuff. Guess what? If you're watching this video, you're probably not that person. Uh, this is for students who hate planners, who are not into it, who don't like them. And really, it's not that you don't like planners. You don't like feeling um, like you have to manage minute details that don't matter to you. That's really what it comes down to. And a lot of times the way that we're taught to use these things is not congruent with what we need. So let me set out a way for you to do this. By the way, even if you hate them, you do have to learn to use them because for anything you want to do in life, and I want you and you want you and everybody wants you to be able to live the life you want to live and do anything you want, well, in order to do anything you want to do in life, you have to do things you don't want to do, including planning for things. Um, you just have to have some way of being able to manage tasks and time. Again, you have to be able to manage tasks and time. You have to be able to chunk down tasks and time into small enough chunks that doesn't feel overwhelming. Um, me, you, right brain people, um, disor disorganized people, people who are tend to be highly creative, outside the box thinkers, um, who are not good with perceiving time or time management, um, these planners can be very, oh, the details can be very overwhelming. So anyhow, I'm gonna show you what I do with students. This, I'm telling you this because it works. I'm gonna give you the simplest way possible. Excuse me, but this is gonna be a bit of a long video, but get ready to press pause because if this is, if you're looking for how to use a planner in a way that works for you, I'm gonna explain some details to you that are really gonna help, all right? All right, first of all, what you want to do is print up your year calendar. So this is the local calendar for the um, local school district. You want to print up the year calendar and you really want about three or four of them. You want one for the refrigerator, one for the bedroom, one for the office, and one to tape inside your planner. So you're literally going to tape it inside there, okay? You're going to cut off the edges like this, cut off all the edges, trim it down so it'll fit in the planner, and then cut it, paste, um, tape it in there. And you also want to tape in your schedule, even whether you're in college, high school, whatever. Um, you've got a complex schedule, go ahead and tape it into the inside of your planner so that it's always there. This is called front loading. Basically what I'm doing with you now is called front loading. Everything that you need for the entire school year, you want to get it done now. Okay, so you never have to think about it again. You want to front load your planner and get it all done. So get this into it and then get ready to use the dates from this to plop them onto your planner. Next thing you want to do is right brain people don't like a lot of stuff. You may have a lot of stuff, but stuff is overwhelming. So what you want to do is get rid of every single page from your planner that you don't need. In this case, I literally took out 11 pages from this planner, making it very thin and very manageable. Okay. Now, as far as this calendar is concerned, you want to take all of, the, all of the pages off up until the date where you're at. And right now it's August of 2014, so we want to get all the rest of the pages gone. So I ripped all of them out, okay? So here we go. Bye-bye. It's all gone. Now, you want to get, <clears throat> excuse me, for your planner, you want to get a monthly planner. This is a great example. The only thing I don't like about this planner is the metal because it can get crushed in the backpack and make it annoyingly difficult to open. Left brain, linear, sequential, structured, organized people don't usually have that problem. We do. So, if it gets crushed in your backpack a lot, if you're a very 
uh, right brain person that tends to happen to you. That may be a bit of a difficulty. If you can find one that's stapled rather than um, spiral, that might be better. So all I have here is uh, July through, through the end of the year. I'm gonna get rid of July, don't need it anymore. Now all I have is August through December. Open up to August, here we go. This is monthly again. This is not weekly, okay? You wanna use a monthly calendar, preferably with lines. The only problem is, is that you'll have to learn shorthand. So I'll discuss shorthand in just a moment. But now we basically have about six pages in this planner. It's a very simple, six months at this point, and then you wanna get your January through May for the, uh, the following year. You can also get academic um, calendars that are like this. Why don't you wanna use a weekly one? Well, here's an example of a weekly one, okay? By the way, I often will cut the planner and dog ear it right from the planner itself. I'll just cut it with a scissor so that you can open up right to the page that you need. Anyhow, the point is, the reason you don't want, this one happens to be monthly and weekly. The reason you don't want monthly and weekly is it's too many blocks of time. Look at that, things like a novel, okay? Now, if you're, again, a left brain person, you're probably not watching at this point, which is great, because this is not for them, this is for right brain, outside the box, divergent thinkers, and you don't wanna be having a novel for your planner, you want it simple, the six page one I was showing you before. There are only nine to 10 months in a school year, okay? Basically August through May, half of August, and there are 36 weeks plus the 10 months of the school year in here. So that's 46 pages to manage. Plus these planners give you a lot of clutter in the back. Although it might be cool to have the periodic table and geometry stuff and plan to achieve your goals. Um, I guarantee you, if you're watching this video, you are not the type of person who reads this stuff. You don't read the school rules in the beginning of the book. So rip it out or just don't use these ones. The other thing is, is that these are visually cluttered, okay? The planners that schools will give you are visually cluttered. Now you may have to advocate for yourself and tell the school, I'm not using this. And you may run into some uh, problems with the school saying, no, you have to use this thing because this is the one that we use. Well, we're just gonna do it because it's the way we do it. No, just advocate for yourself and say, ah, uh, no. You can tell them you're working with a coach and say, the coach said, don't do that. Look at this, it's a lot of color that's visually distracting and it's got these famous quotes which frankly are visually distracting. It's just all you need is simple black and white, clean, easy to see, a planner that serves the purpose of planning. That's all you want, okay? So I do not recommend these for the students that I work with. All right. Now, in your planner, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to take your year calendar and you are going to want to highlight every single day off for the entire school year. What that means is that your planner is going to look like this. You're gonna go through the calendar with a fine tooth comb and highlight every day off. This is November of 2014. In this school district, they have the 14th off and they have the entire week for Thanksgiving off, okay? This is all done and it feels really good for students to be able to see this. Trust me, I do this all the time with students. We go through the entire year, get the whole planner done and it feels really good to know. They, you start saying, whoa, that's a lot of days off and you can really look forward to these days off. Now I also, in terms of front loading, will write in the days from the previous month the 31st, the 30th of October, and so on, in a different color just so that visually it stands out. And then you can pick when you're ready to use November or when you're done with October, etc. So, um, let's see, oh, I want, so you want to do this for the entire school year. And then the only problem is, is you don't have as much space as you do on the weekly planner. They give you tons of lines. So what you're going to want to do is learn to write shorthand. And here's an example of the shorthand. I will put a photograph of this on the blog post so you can go ahead and look there up with photos of everything. Hopefully you can see this. But what you wanna do is write shorthand. So for example, for math, it says M, page 65, one through 21 odd. So it's 
very short. LA, the draft is due. Science, SCI, the lab 14 is due. 4 p.m. dentist. Anytime you put something in your planner, you want to put it on the date it's due, not the date you're given the assignment. Now, what you can also do is do what's called backwards planning. So you put, for example, let's say you have a test this day, you write it in on the day that you have the test and you backwards plan and then you can write in the days that you intend to study for the test. Now, if you're a right brain person, chances are, if you write in that you're gonna study four times, you're probably not gonna study four times. So you want to account for that and plan for five or six times that you're gonna study and just know that you're not gonna study a couple of those times and be okay with it, okay? So uh, a lot of times it's better to over plan. Depends on your personality, but um, consider that. So you're gonna put it on the day that it's, that it's due or that you're doing the activity, then backwards plan. Then the other thing is, is that anything that's associated with the time, like in this case, there's a dentist appointment at four, you wanna put the time first before you write what the item is. That's because visually the eye is going to see the number and you want to be aware of the time first because that's a priority. That's not flexible. 4 p.m. is not flexible so you have to know that always get the time first. Finally, you want to color code your calendar. We well, don't need to but a lot of people you might want to color code or have some kind of coding system because it makes it easier visually. You are probably a very visual person. This is going to make things easier for you as well. Voila. All right, now finally, like I said, you want to highlight every single day that's off. So in August, for example, you might start with the weekends and you're going to go ahead, highlight all the days off for the entire school year. I'm starting with weekends. There's all my Saturdays. Now, in this case, the school starts on the 21st of the month. So you're going to highlight all your days, get it all done. And then anytime there's a big event, like here, you can write huge day one, for example. And the cool thing is, is that you can still write on top of that. So for whatever, Halloween, you can put an icon of a pumpkin or something and you still have room to write on top of it, let's say 6 p.m. soccer or whatever. Okay. So you're gonna highlight all the days and get everything in your calendar that you can. Now, if you have things that are um, odd about your calendar, for example, if you have a late start day or certain weird times of classes on certain days, or if you have extracurricular activities, get everything onto the calendar that you possibly can for the entire school year. If you know that you have a certain activity that goes every Thursday night from six to eight um, until November, get it in the calendar now. Again, you wanna front load as much as you can. It's a lot of work up front, but it will save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration for the entire rest of the school year. So you really wanna get into that habit. One of the worst things that students experience is this whole swimming upstream syndrome. You start to get a little behind. Usually this starts to happen around the second or third week of school, but it doesn't become evident until about the sixth week of school. So you're starting to get behind around the third week and then around the sixth week, suddenly something happens. A report card comes out, a grade gets back to you, something happens, you have a D or an F and something and big red flags come up. You do not want to get into that pattern. Having a great plan at the beginning is going to help you out. Now, I also do not recommend, I do recommend you put these on your wall. These are really cheap. Go ahead and grab a couple and throw it on the wall in your bedroom or your office. But I don't recommend using them with um, thumbtacks because you want to be able to pull it down every once in a while to work with it. So if you're doing a lot of work, like if I was highlighting this, I wouldn't actually do it on the wall. I'd pull it down and do it on the table. So having these little um, nails about like that big, get your nail and hammer and put it up and then hit it into the wall. It'll stay there for the entire school year. I think I've covered most of what I was going to say. If I forgot anything, I'll go ahead and get it in the show, in the show notes on um, the blog. And I want to thank you very much for your support and I want to wish you an awesome school year. Okay, you got this. Of course, it's going to be ups and downs, but it's all good. You got this. Take care. Be well.